Kia ora guys, Michelle here and here we are with the video review that I'm sure you've all been waiting for when you get to hear all about how I found my Z-Pax duplex tent on my 1700 km or 1000 mile hike of Te Araroa last summer. Oh you guys it's early in the morning and uh, you know how I am about my cup of tea so... Ah perfection. Now last year, before I set out on my through hike, I did a full review of the Z-Pax Duplex 10 in which I went over all of the specifications and what my initial thoughts were. If you haven't already seen that video, make sure you go and check that out. I will leave a link up above and also in the description down below. Now in this video, I am not only going to cover the things that I liked and the things that I didn't like about the Duplex on Te Araroa, but I'm also going to cover off some of the points that I made in that previous video and tell you what I ended up thinking after hiking 1700 kilometers. Well of course the first and probably the biggest thing that I liked about this tent and the reason why I bought it in the first place was because of its weight. Now for a two person tent which technically the Z-Pax duplex is including the tent stakes and everything that you need to set up the tent it only weighs in at about 740 grams on my scales here at home. Now of course the main reason why the duplex doesn't weigh as much as some of the other two person tents on the market is because of the material that it it is made out of. So it is made of a Dyneema composite fabric material which is not only incredibly lightweight but is also very very strong and durable. Now I was sort of expecting to purchase this tent because of the fact that it was an ultralight tent and not really find that it was any more beneficial to carry that tent over say another lightweight tent that's on the market let's say maybe the MSR Hubba Hubba which might weigh in at about a kilogram to a kilogram and a half. I never once found myself thinking that I would have preferred to have purchased one of those instead and this is largely to do with the space that you get inside the duplex. I found that the duplex was incredibly roomy inside the tent and even though it weighed about half the weight of some of the other one person light hiking tents that other hikers were using I had double the amount of space inside. So the Z-Pax duplex is a duplex so it is a two person tent and I have to say that even though it is a two person tent I'm not entirely sure that I would use it as one. Um, I think that potentially if you had two people actually in the tent it might be a little bit cramped and whereas there is definitely enough room to fit two sleeping pads side by side inside the tent even if you do have to top and tail the people inside it just means that there probably isn't going to be enough room in there for your gear as well so you would have to store your gear in the vestibules. The second thing that I really liked about the duplex tent was just how weatherproof and waterproof it was. Now before I purchased this tent I obviously did a lot of research into the hydrostatic head rating or just the general waterproofing of the Z-Plex tent and how that compared to some of the other lightweight tents that are on the market specifically for through hiking. Now when you look at the numbers it looks really impressive. You've got your 20,000 millimeter hydrostatic head on your bathtub floor in the Z-Plex duplex and then the outer canopy material you also have a choice of different types of DCF material that you can purchase which will give you different waterproofing ratings. Now I went with the olive drab colour because that meant that I could get a 15,000 millimetre hydrostatic head rating on the outside of my tent as opposed to say the more popular blue colour which has a slightly lower waterproofing rating. Now if you're somebody who's just starting out and you're watching a video to try and figure out what the best tent is for you to buy probably speaking about things like hydrostatic head ratings is just going to to confuse you. So really what it came down to for me was how the tent actually performed and even though I was lucky enough to not really have to put up the tent in any torrential downpours there were a couple occasions where the tent did get put through its paces. In fact there was one particular storm that came through just after I came off of Mount Porongia in the Waikato region and I was staying in a Trail Angels back garden there was a massive storm coming all the way up the country and we had some torrential downpours and I sat in the duplex tent completely dry and I was so impressed at how it stood up in that particular downpour. It's really raining out there. 
Now there were certain things that I looked out for during this downpour. First of all, I wanted to make sure that there was no water beading on the inside of the tent. And I have to say that not only did I not have any water beading on the inside, but I also didn't really find that it was becoming too damp, even though the downpour was at night and so you've got that ambient dampness anyway. The other thing that I was really concerned about, because I know that it's an issue that some hikers have had, was whether the water could get down from the outside of my tent and into my bathtub floor. You have to be quite careful with how you pitch the duplex tent to make sure that the outer wall of the tent is not resting on the inside of the bathtub and therefore causing water to come actually into the inside of your tent. The mesh outer that runs all the way around the bathtub floor worked perfectly in that particular example and I was able to sit inside my tent and actually watch the water running down and off the outside which is exactly what it's intended to do. Now the tent is also fully seam taped all the way around which just adds to the amount of waterproofing that it has and I never experienced any issues with the seam taping on my tent during the course of my hike. Now we get into some of the other things that I liked that perhaps aren't completely obvious when you purchase the tent. One of the biggest things that I liked about this tent that I wasn't expecting is just how quick it is to set up. You would have seen at the start of this video that it only takes me about three and a half minutes to get the tent fully set up and that includes rolling back the front two doors and getting everything nice and taut. Now another one of the benefits I didn't really expect to get from this particular tent is that I really enjoyed the fact that it is fully enclosed. I have been looking into lighter weight options for shelters even from the duplex tent for what I am planning on doing in the South Island but I still think that even though okay I could save myself a few extra grams with a tarp set up it's just not something that I would enjoy using because I'm not fully enclosed. Now I know that there are ways that you can set up a tarp to be almost fully enclosed for example you could put a little uh, mosquito net bivy inside of it um, but you don't get the space benefits that you get in the duplex and one of the major considerations that I have obviously has to be with my anxiety and a lot of that comes down to how safe I feel on the trail and even though this is just a tiny little piece of material that is between me and the rest of the outside world when I put down all the doors and fully enclose myself in the tent it basically feels like I have my own little apartment my own little home that I feel completely safe in. One other thing that I really loved about the duplex is how easy it is to keep clean and tidy whilst you're actually out on the trail. I come from a family who used to carry carpet with them whenever they would go camping and also a dust pan and brush so that we could keep our tent as clean as possible while we were in it and we could give it a good clean before we packed it up to come home and I have to say that it's been really nice to be able to carry on that that tradition whilst I've been using the duplex. Now because of that bathtub floor that isn't actually staked down to the ground in any place it makes it really easy for you to sort of roll it towards an open vestibule door and that allows you to collect all of the dirt and mud that might have collected in the bottom as well as dried grass and other bits and pieces that might get inside your tent roll it down and then basically sweep it out of your vestibule door. For me, there's nothing worse than getting into a tent at the end of the day that is already filthy dirty from weeks and weeks of camping. So for me, this is a really great feature. And the last thing that I really enjoyed about this tent, which I did touch on in my first review video, is the double vestibules. Now why is this such a massive advantage? Well it became really obvious to me, as I said, when I was watching my other hiking companions with their single vestibule tents. The options that they had for versatility whilst they're out on trail really weren't as um, extensive as the ones that I had with the duplex. So for example, because of the double vestibules, I could effectively allocate each of my tent to a different usage. So generally speaking I would use the back side of the tent for storing my gear and other items that I just wanted to keep out of the way. That meant that I could keep the front side of the tent for things like my cooking area and also obviously for getting in and out of the tent. Alright so we've covered my favourite parts of the duplex and let's be clear they really do outweigh all of the negatives but I wouldn't be doing my job here if I didn't tell you the things that I didn't like about the duplex. So let's start with the little things first. One of the biggest things that I noticed that I really would have liked in the duplex tent was just somewhere up on the ceiling of the tent where I could have attached my headlamp. Now I'm somebody who would sort of go to bed at the end of the day but then have to spend 20 minutes or half 
an hour actually getting myself ready to go to sleep and during that time I'd be doing things like writing my journal or I might even be doing a crossword puzzle or something similar and it was kind of a pain to actually have to put on my headlamp every night in order to be able to do that also when you're sitting in a tent and you're wearing a headlamp it's more likely that you're going to be inadvertently shining that into somebody else's tent as well so that's something that I think could really be looked into for the duplex. The second thing that I noticed that did kind of annoy me a little bit is the fact that with the rainbow mesh doors for getting in and out of both sides you can't roll them away and stash them nice and neatly somewhere. So unlike the vestibule doors on the front of the tent which you can pin back with a nice little toggle there's nothing similar for the mesh doors on the inside so if you do want to open out the entire tent and have a really nice airflow all the way through you've sort of just got to leave them on the ground or roll them up on the inside of the tent and to me that just means that there's more opportunity for them to get snagged or damaged. Now in actual fact this is a relatively minor thing because in the entire 1700 kilometers that I was on Te Arador, I didn't find that I had those doors open very often. And generally this is because of the sand flies or the other insects and things that I was trying to keep out of my tent but it would be nice to have the option of doing that if I wanted to so maybe this is something else that could be improved. Now a lot of reviews on the duplex talk about how noisy the DCF material is. There were a couple of nights on the trail where the wind was bad enough that it was flapping the tent around a little bit but I have to say that I didn't really notice it was any noisier than another tent would be and it's certainly not something that kept me awake. In fact usually I'm kept awake by the wind anyway. I think a lot of this comes down to how you pitch the tent. Obviously if you don't get a perfect pitch on it and it's not properly taut all the way around there's going to be more room for it to flap around in the wind and certainly if you're leaving your doors open and you're not actually tying the doors back then of course those doors are going to flap around in the wind as well but generally speaking every night when I went to bed I'd go around and make sure that all the guy lines were really taut and that there wasn't too much give in the side of the tent and I generally didn't have any issues and I certainly never had anybody else complaining that my tent was keeping them awake at night in fact probably the biggest area where the noise did become an issue was when I was moving around in inside the tent on the bathtub floor. I'd say that it is a lot noisier to be scooting around on the inside of the duplex than it would be in any other kind of lightweight hiking tent and again that might be something that could annoy you or your hiking companions depending on who you're hiking with. But let's be honest most of us are using Thermarest Neolite pads anyway and they're probably more noisy than the duplex is. Now we're getting into some of the more common issues that people have with this tent and they are ones that I've experienced as well. So firstly a lot of people whilst I was on trail commented on how transparent my tent was. Obviously this might be an issue to some people if they're a little bit worried about people being able to see things when they're getting changed in their tent in the morning and you can minimize this by getting a different color of fabric on the outside of the duplex. Personally I feel like when you're out on the trail there's only a certain amount of privacy you can expect anyway and so for me you know just getting changed underneath my sleeping bag or just knowing that no Nobody could really see anything, it's just that they could see an outline of me when I was in my tent was enough for me to not really worry about how transparent the outside was. But outside of privacy actually the biggest thing I noticed about how transparent the tent is is how much shade or rather how little shade it was able to provide me during the day. Now this is something that I alluded to in my first review of this tent and I thought that perhaps the tent might be able to cast a little bit more shade than it actually does. It's not particularly good at casting shade and you know like most tents if it's been sitting out in the sunshine for an extended period of time it is quite warm inside the tent. But that's where the design of the duplex comes in really handy because at any time you can open up one or more of the doors and have a nice airflow through and it does give you some sort of protection from the sun as well. Again if this is something that you're really worried about you can always opt to get a different color of the duplex and that will take away a lot of those issues. I've sort of tried to build up to the things that I don't like the most about the duplex tent and the penultimate one of these is the tent stakes. Now ZPAX doesn't technically recommend the tent stakes that you're supposed to use with this tent it doesn't sell it with stakes so you really have the option of what you want to use but I think it's pretty popular for most people with this tent to use either the titanium shepherd hook stakes which you can also buy off of the ZPAX website or the titanium 
titanium V stakes which they sell to go with this tent. Now I purchased eight of the titanium V stakes and I thought that these would be a good option but if you've watched the video on the gear that I ditched after I got off the trail, you'll know that I had big problems with these titanium V stakes. In fact, I think I managed to bend four of the eight stakes that I had, and so by the time I reached Hamilton, I had to basically replace all of the stakes. But it was kind of annoying to me that a big factor for buying the tent was how lightweight it was, and I based that on the weight of the titanium V stakes, and then I had to buy slightly heavier stakes further down the trail, because those just weren't good enough. And finally, the biggest downside of this tent is obviously the price. Now if you're going to buy this tent directly from z -Packs, it's going to set you back 600 US dollars and guess what that doesn't include the stakes that you need to go with it and if you're going to be using trekking poles you're also going to need those on top. Now I didn't really want to know exactly how much the duplex tent cost me in New Zealand dollars so I haven't actually looked it up in my bank account to what that converted to but you can reasonably expect that it's going to be around about the thousand dollar mark. Now there's no doubt that this is a lot to pay for a tent but you have to take into consideration the things that you get with the duplex that you don't get with some of the other tents on the market. And to be honest, just with the way that things work in New Zealand, even if you're looking at some of the other popular alternatives like say a Big Agnes tent or an MSR tent, in New Zealand you're still paying seven or eight hundred dollars for a tent like that regardless. So price is a massive issue but for me the duplex was just worth it. All right we're into the third and final section of this video and I just wanted to cover some of the things that I mentioned in that original video review that I thought were worthy of coming back to after 1700 kilometers. So firstly in that video I talked a lot about the height of the bathtub floor and how far that was up off the ground. So when I first pitched the tent I did set my trekking poles to the recommended 48 inches which I think is around about 128 centimeter height. Um, which enables you to get the full 8 inch depth of your bathtub floor. But one of my biggest concerns with that was that there seemed to be a lot of space around the bottom of the tent. And I was particularly concerned about the amount of rain that might be able to get actually underneath the tent because of how far it was sitting off the ground. So after a little bit of trial and error and after a couple of days on the trail I figured out that the best height for those trekking poles to be for me was around about 115 cm centimeters which I think is about 46 inches. It also maximized a little bit more of the floor space on the inside of the tent obviously because it was sitting a bit closer to the ground it meant that I could just use a little bit more of the available bathtub floor. Now there are a couple of features that I talked about in that initial review video that I just didn't really end up using on trail. That was the interior elastic adjustments on the inside of the tent which helps you to adjust how close the uh, wall on the outside is sitting to the mesh and then also the storage pockets that are on either side of the tent. Now I did use these on occasion, usually I would use them to sort of store my um, FPOS card and my ID in but to be honest most of the time those storage pockets just sat empty. I would just have my gear and my belongings sitting around me in the tent. Now I think probably if I was to use this tent with another person that's when those storage pockets would really come in handy. Now I talked a little bit about the rainbow mesh doors before but in my original review video I thought that they were going to be great for being able to get in and out of the tent and generally speaking I did find them pretty good um, although it was still a little bit difficult to get in and out of the duplex on occasion. Obviously you've got a trekking pole right down the middle of each of those doors. So even though z -Packs has sort of tried to take that into account and tried to give you as much room as possible to get in and out of the tent, I still found that I sort of had to manoeuvre my body and contort it to get in and out. The final thing that I want to cover is again probably one of the most talked about things with the duplex and that is the amount of condensation on the inside of it. Now a lot of people say that because it is a single wall tent uh, you're going to get a lot more condensation than you would say in a double walled tent and that is because you're not getting the same amount of ventilation inside. I have to say though 
though that over the 1700 kilometers that I was hiking on Te Araroa, I didn't really find that this was an issue at all and maybe it's just me I come from a long history of camping in the outdoors anyway with sill nylon tents and I'm just used to condensation maybe this is just something that people in other countries throughout the world are worried about but in New Zealand it doesn't really matter where you are if you go out into the outdoors whatever time of year it is wherever you happen to be you're going to get condensation on your tent it doesn't matter if you have a single wall tent like the duplex or if you just have a standard double wall tent so if you know that you're going to be dealing with condensation anyway then to me it just sort of makes sense to have a tent that's made out of dcf um, and a single walled now of course the problem with the sill nylon tents if they start to get wet and condensation-y on the inside is that they absorb that water weight and they don't dry out anywhere near as quickly as the duplex does so in short yes i had condensation issues with the duplex but that's just something i know i have to deal with in New Zealand and I'd rather deal with it with a DCF tent than a sill nylon tent. Okay guys that is the end of this video which is actually the second of my big three gear reviews after 1700 kilometers on the trail. If you haven't already make sure that you go and check out my Z-Pax Arc Hall backpack review which I did a couple of weeks ago. Again I will link it up here and also in the description down below. If you like this video don't forget to go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and ding that notification bell. Make sure you stay tuned in a couple of weeks time for the last of my big three gear reviews where I'm going to be telling you you all about my enlightened equipment Enigma quilt and my Thermarest Neo Air X-Lite sleeping pad. Until then, take care and stay safe out there.